putting the sheetrock on the walls really brightens up the place. Look at the difference. channel everybody hey I'm three years in right now I started this <laughs> three years ago this month tearing off the old rotten roof and uh wow seems like a long time ago um I'm hoping to finish and move in here next year so uh we'll see what happens I got a lot to do but some big changes hopefully are going to happen this year everything takes time and one of the things that takes time is all the little details, the little rinky-dink stuff that's got to be cared for before you can do the next thing, like cutting off the remnant of that old beam. And here's another little detail that's kind of puzzling to me. Uh, the sparks flying, that was all about cutting off a nail that was protruding from behind the wall, so there wasn't a head that I could pull on with a crowbar. I had to cut it off. Here's another one upstairs. A big old spike right through the roof. I'm going to have to cut that thing off. And when I was doing the outside of the house last summer, there's one on the outside. Uh, So what's that all about? I, uh, you guys, if you've been with me long enough, you know there used to be a TV antenna up on the roof. And I think that the guy wires that came down were fastened to these huge pole barn spikes that penetrate the roof all the way through. They, they didn't want them to pull out, I guess. I don't know. I'll deal with it. Okay, that's not going to work. There are nails in that beam, and nails are about the best way to desharpen a chainsaw. So I'm now uh, trying the sawzall. Saws all did not work, uh, not enough battery power. I, uh, to save money, I buy these cheap knockoff batteries and I end up not getting good results. Junk is junk. And uh, so now I'm down to trying the uh, multi oscillate, the oscillating multi tool. It'll work. Oh, I did find that nail. Only a little way to go with the oscillating tool.
not done. That blade was dull. I had to change the blade. Okay, three power tools and one more nail and a hammer. And a half hour later, I got it cut off. Oh, some of my favorite people are here. I love these guys. My wife takes these guys cold drinks and snacks in the summertime. So they love us too. All right, I got the blocking in now and uh, it has a curve to it. Dang. Sometimes things are just not straightforward. Okay, I got that straightened out. Now an hour in, so then I can insulate back here. And then uh, install drywall. Hopefully, by the end of the day today, I'll have much of this wall done. Yeah, I forgot. I have to do the same thing up here in the other corner. Sheesh. Whoa. That's perfect. So, that one over there was perfect too. I needed a piece 16 and a half inches long. I went to the scrap pile, picked one up, picked up a piece, measured it, 16 and a half. Exactly. And this one too. So, sometimes things go the other way. Okay. Got the spacer in up there now too. It's ready for drywall and uh, time for lunch. That's looking better. As I'm putting on the drywall, I'm also doing the follow-up electrical wiring. The fireplace wall gets eight outlets because I got plans. Yeah, the fireplace wall, I have big ideas for it. I've got <laughs> eight outlets here. Um, cupboards down low, bookcases all the way to the ceiling. So this will be for technology, like my old record player, uh, lamps, lamps in the bookcase, uh, television, light on top of the fireplace. The television is going to be behind panel doors. So during the day, it will be invisible, hidden. Huh. Wait a minute, maybe I'll leave this as a conversation piece. Every bathroom in an old house needs a conversation piece. Actually, probably every room in this house has a built-in conversation piece. Uh, in uh, the rear bedroom upstairs, it's this cove in the ceiling. You see that? Only one of two places in the house that I've been able to keep the original plaster. So, yeah. Even while this side of the room was demolished, 
there was just enough roof to preserve this cove up here. And I might try to copy it in the bed alcove over here. Uh, we'll see that later. I've been getting some help with the drywall and that has really been nice. Uh, I've had three drop shipments of drywall come and each time the neighbors come out and help me. Where the first load, Ken came over from the cafe and uh, helped me bring that into the house. And then the second and the third times, John and John Paul, my uh, friends and neighbors and contractors who are working on the house behind, stopped over and helped carry in the drywall. And they stayed on to help install the drywall on the ceiling, the tall ceiling of the, the bedroom. And uh, yeah, much appreciated. I'm looking forward to some other big changes this year. I've just sent in the application for the fireplace and chimney. And uh, so I'm hoping to do that in the late summer or fall. And I'm gonna get started on the plumbing soon and the heating system. Uh, some of that has to go in before I can finish the drywall. So I can't wait too much longer on that. I've been waiting, t I'm trying to <laughs> spread out the costs. But because uh, I'm basically doing this on a monthly uh, allowance from my social security. So yeah, fun. So for those who haven't been in from the start and don't know the layout here, I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough. Uh, probably not the upstairs, but just the main floor. So here we go. Yeah, it's snowing again today even though it's almost spring. So as you come in into the entryway here, you first see the stairway to second floor. On the right is a coat closet with some of the last remaining plaster. On the left is the living room with the fireplace, big tall windows, in the front of the house. Then a large doorway into the dining room. And the dining room will have a large uh, dishes cupboard. On the left is a study with my wife's huge old school desk. On the right is a kitchen with a walk-in pantry over there. On um, the left is another stairway to the upstairs with its own entrance. Then coming back around, we bypass the basement stair. And enter the mudroom. Mudroom dash laundry room and this has been the headquarters for my drywall cutting and electrical paraphernalia there's the drywall lift which I borrowed from John half bath back here and just inside the door my tool closet tool shop. Then through the mudroom laundry area we enter the master suite with the bedroom area in the middle with a cathedral ceiling. Sitting area on the right. Walk-in closet on the left. gonna be spring soon I'll be getting the bikes out and the lawnmower this is a big pile of light fixtures I've been ordering light fixtures those will be about the last thing to be installed but when I see them on sale I snatch them up so I've had some check-ins from followers in Sweden and Scotland and New Zealand and uh, uh, I think it must be fun for you guys not only listening to my accent 
or my lack of accent, as I see it, <laughs> but also uh, the different terminology that I use for drywall example. I've called it drywall. It's also called wallboard, and I've also called it sheetrock. It's made from limestone rock, anyway. Um, and this, this uh, drywall compound that goes on the joints and the screw heads is called spackle. And um, although I usually just call it drywall goop. <laughs> yeah. Fun. Thanks for watching.